Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. We have a very important topic to discuss this week in the weekly vlog. And I wanna start off by reading uh, something that was sent in by a woman named Sue. She writes, Susan, you talk a lot about the strength you derive from social connection and social support. I envy the strength you gain through social contact and understand the strength that that, that that provides for many. I am, on the other hand, an extreme introvert. I am not shy. I am not socially inept. I am not socially incapable. I know the difference. I do not find connecting with others to be uplifting or recharging. I find it draining and tedious. Don't misunderstand. I am not a recluse. I am married and I have a family. I have deep and meaningful friendships, and I am retired from a meaningful teaching and counseling profession, much like your profession. But I do not find calling up a stranger, or even a friend, something that I do to recharge my batteries or bolster my resolve to stick to bright lines. I desperately need help getting my body, weight, and health under control but reaching out is something that I do not do. Any thoughts on this dilemma? I have not joined the Brightline community or committed to a boot camp because I can't imagine how I could take full advantage of a program that is powered by people who run on a different energy grid than I run on. Sue. Oh, Sue, thank you so much for writing in. Um, as I'm sure you've heard me say, and as you've obviously gleaned, I am an extreme extrovert. So hearing from you as an extreme introvert is very um, powerful and it's just such a good reminder for me. And I wanna let you know that I read your um, submission just last night and I've been thinking about it ever since. And this morning I made a phone call because as an extreme extrovert, I do not have the presumption or the hubris to imagine that I could have any notion of what it would be like to work the Bright Line Eating program as it's laid out as an extreme introvert. How would I know? Um, I do, however, know someone who is an extreme introvert. So this morning I called her. Um, her name is Meg Quior. She's 65 years old. She lives in uh, the middle of nowhere in Maine, <laughs> up in Maine. And she's been doing Bright Line Eating since the beginning. She's been doing Bright Line Eating for a long time now. Um, and I called her and I said, Meg, it's Susan Pierce Thompson. And she said, hey, Susan. And I said, Meg, I'm feeling inept. And she laughed and I said, and I wanna read you something. And as soon as I finish reading it, you'll see why. And I read her what you just sent in. I read her that and she laughed and she said, oh, I could have written every word of that. That's just like coming out of my soul. I so understand where that woman is coming from. And I said, I knew you would. And I said, so tell me, Meg, um, what was it like for you doing Bright Line Eating as an extreme introvert? And she said, the tools for an introvert are there. Just the, emphasis on them and the balance of them and the use of them is just going to look very different than it is for an extrovert. She said, so for you, Susan, yeah, you're going to make phone calls to, you know, get through the day and, and, re and bolster your bright lines. She said, I don't make phone calls, but I journal and I meditate and I reflect. And she said that in the boot camp, the modules and the coaching calls are all provided in a recorded format that you can listen to and digest at your own pace. And she said that as an introvert was so helpful for me because I could sort of retire to my, my cozy space and get exposed to this information and then process it at my own pace and reflect on it and let it feed me, let it serve as fuel for my journey. And then I could journal a little and reflect a little and she said, all of the tools that are, for an introvert are there. They're all there. Um, it's just that as an introvert, she said, I found myself titrating the use of them um, in a way that worked for me. Um, I asked her specifically how she interacted with our online support community. Um, and she said that, um, she pointed out that a lot of people in the online support community um, 
what did she call it? Lurk <laughs> is what she called it. She said they lurk. Um, if you look at the number of people in, in any given Bright Line Eating group, and then you look at the number of people who are active posters, it's a tiny fraction of the people who are active posters. The rest are reading and you know liking posts and stuff like that, but they're not, um, they're not posting all the time. She said that she posted her introduction in the online support community and it was very helpful for her to get um, feedback and, and to be welcomed into the community. And she said a few times during the boot camp, she would post something that was on her mind and that it always felt so nourishing when someone would respond with a thumbs up or you know whatever. And um, so here's what, here's what I know, Susan Pierce Thompson, here's what I know, Sue, about introverts and extroverts. There's research on this. Um, social connection is equally important for introverts and extroverts, meaning not being connected socially has an equal hit on introverts and extroverts and finding the optimal amount of social connection, like being optimally socially connected is equally um, life enhancing in terms of increasing happiness and well-being for introverts and extroverts. The difference is in the amount and the depth of connection that is optimal. So extroverts tend to have a much higher frequency of contact that's optimal and, and more superficial contact um, serves them just fine. Introverts tend to have a lower frequency of contact that's optimal and the contact is preferably one-on-one -on -one and deeper. And yet both introverts and extroverts suffer profoundly when they are isolated or when they are running below their optimal level. So I, as an extrovert, as an extreme extrovert, I really enjoy making, you're gonna faint Sue, but you know, um, like the more the better, but five to 10 to 15 phone call connections a day. <laughs> I know, not your thing, I get it. Um, but I do, and you know, if I've had 14, adding a 15th or a 16th feels great. Like, the more the better. Um, my dad is an extreme introvert, and my sense of him, I haven't asked him this, but my sense of him is that, you know, talking on the phone with someone once a week, you know, is fine. And he's happily married, and he's close with me, and he's close with his brother and a few other people. I think he and his wife have one or two couples in their town that they socialize with every couple months or something. And like, that's good. That's enough contact for him. So it's important to find the optimal amount of contact and to not hover below that. Um, and to recognize that as an extreme introvert, it's totally true that your optimal amount is gonna be way different than mine. Um, and that while social contact may not recharge your batteries, it also serves other functions. It does, research shows, actually lift happiness and well-being to be connected with other people to some degree. Now, I just want to emphasize that you can get tremendous value out of the Bright Line Eating Boot Camp um, without all of that social connection. I think the way Meg went through the boot camp with, um, you know, with journaling and reflection and just absorbing the content in the video modules and listening to the recordings of the coaching calls um, and letting all of that fuel her journey. And, you know, going into the online support community when she wanted to and reading people's posts and lurking a little bit and learning a little bit about various topics and then repairing to her own private space to cogitate all that. Um, that is how she described working the boot camp. She also got into a mastermind group, which is, you know, a, a small group of people that meet on the phone once a week um, to support each other. And she found the depth of those connections to be really nourishing. And here it is now, two and a half years later, and um, her mastermind group still meets now twice a month, and she still loves that connection. Now, Meg has gone from 261 pounds. It took her two years. She was a very slow loser. It took her two years to lose her excess weight of 136 pounds off her body. She now weighs 125 pounds, is incredibly healthy, so peaceful with her food. She's at goal weight. She's in a slender right-sized body. 
and her life has never been the same, will never be the same. I mean, doing bright line eating as an extreme introvert absolutely changed her life. So what I want to invite you to consider, Sue, is that old saying of not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? Um, I would hate to see you suffer with your health and your excess weight and your food um, because you can't see a way clear to adapting the bright line eating way of living for your introverted self, your introverted nature. I think that personality traits do vary tremendously and knowing that you're an introvert, it sounds like you know yourself really well. Um, I hope that it feels empowering and, and helpful and hopeful to learn that there is a suite of tools available to you in the boot camp that will very much um, support your introverted nature and be useful to you. And it's just on the emphasis that you put on which tools you use and how and when um, and staying true to yourself, to thine own self be true. Um, we all use the tools differently in different ways at different times. And I feel super confident having talked with Meg this morning. She was so loving and so affirming of, oh, she said, I, I so get it. I so get it why someone would shy away from, you know, the, the seeming extroverted nature of bright line eating. But she said the reality is that there's, there's an undercurrent that's very deep in bright line eating and there's a way to work the program that is very well suited to the extreme introvert. And I hope, Sue, that you will step forward to get out of the pain you're in. I mean, I just when I was reading that little paragraph of, I so need help with my food and my weight and my health, I don't want you to suffer. And we here at Bright Line Eating are here for you. And our community has a beautiful, special, quiet <laughs> space for you as an extreme introvert and all of the other introverts watching this, which as you know is a huge proportion of the population. So I just wanna say to all my introverted friends out there, just know that I honor you and I respect our differences and I want you to know that Bright Line Eating is here for you too. We also are having a boot camp that's starting in just a few days. And so if you wanna click right down below and just get access again to the Food Freedom videos, that three video series that really educates you about the psychology and neuroscience of what goes on in the brain with food and what sustainable weight loss really looks like. Click down below to get access to those videos. And um, in just a few days, you'll be invited to join a boot camp, and you can say yes or no. It's, it's a free world. But um, my hope for you, Sue, is that, um, is that you will step up to get out of the pain that you're in and to step into a healthier world and a healthier body and a healthier life. So that's the weekly vlog. Um, go ahead and click down below, get access to those videos, get access to the next boot camp, and I will see you next week.